screen. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this Holy Communion service through the benefit of Zoom. And this is the fifth Sunday of Easter. And we have a wonderful Bible reading in the Gospel today. It's um, uh, Jesus tells us that there's plenty of room in heaven for us all. And Hugh is going to read our Gospel and uh, preach for us and also do our intercession. So welcome everybody to this service. Our opening hymn is To God Be the Glory. Beautiful. I couldn't have sang it better myself. Uh, welcome to those who have just joined us uh, for the uh, communion service this morning on the fifth Sunday of Easter. The Lord be with you and also with you. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. So we pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts, 
by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. The gospel calls us to turn away from sin and be faithful to Christ. And as we offer ourselves to him in penitence and faith, we renew our confidence and trust in his mercy in a short period of silence. And we pray together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed. Through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And so the collect for the fifth Sunday of Easter. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, have overcome death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that as by your grace going before us, you put into our minds good desires. So by your continual help, we may bring them to good effect through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hugh will now read our gospel. Sorry, Paul, can you just go back to the other page? Do you mind, please? Alleluia, alleluia. I am the first and the last, says the Lord, and the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Alleluia. alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to, you, to you, O Lord. Lord. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If you were not so without food, I go to prepare a place for you. I will come again and I will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. 
and you know the way to the place where I'm going. So, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, I have been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me. Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do and in fact will do greater things than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May my words be acceptable in your sight, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, after reading that um, reading, me being another doubting Thomas, it's quite appropriate for today's reading. Um, but I will be having words with uh, Philip as well. I, I know it's got to mention as well, so I'll be I'll be pulling him up when we all get back together. Um, but it's quite striking um, how um, Alec Alec will relate to this. We use this many times in funerals, um, and and it's and, and it almost you don't really need the Bible anymore. You can they just roll off the tongue because we use it so much. Um, but one of the things which has really hit me is that we use it at funerals and it's quite striking that it, at a time when we've got the highest death rate currently in Europe. Um, and maybe it's, maybe it's only natural for us, um, for us to have doubts at these times. How have we ended up in this predicament? How are we in this situation? Uh, where's, where's the light at the end of the tunnel? Um, and, and obviously there's doubts about uh, our worry for loved ones. Um, for one another uh, and, and, and what the future holds, I guess. <clears throat> and, and I guess today Thomas was uh, asking the question, um, he had major doubts and where do we go and how do we get there? Um, and, and if you're having your own doubts at this time, um, please know that this is okay. It's okay to have doubts, it's natural. Um, I actually think it's a more of a healthy uh, faith you have uh, when you struggle with your faith, you have your doubts, you have your questions, than, than just accepting everything we're told. I don't actually think that's a healthy faith. And I think I often find when we're doing preparation for um, confirmation, for example, one of the things I find helpful is people leave the room with more questions than answers, uh, because then I think that's a real live living faith. <clears throat> I'm finding at the moment, I think we've all got to find different ways to engage uh, with the times we find ourselves. And I find, I don't know where it's come from, but I've just found that poetry for me is something that I find it easier to express the feelings and emotions of these times. Um, so I've done a new poem um, that I'd like to share with you today. Um, so, so this may explain more what's going on. <clears throat> where is God? I call out into the lonely night. Why is God so quiet? Where is my God? Were God to grab the phone or text or bang on my door? Were God to grab me by my collar and ask for much more? Were God to shout and make a racket, illuminate the sky and light up each planet? Would I like what I see? Or would God be too overbearing for me? But I still ask the question, where is God? We're facing a pandemic, does God even care? Whilst we're all left floundering, all of us in despair. Does God share the pain and the suffering that we feel? This is not a movie for heaven's sake, it's happening for real. And just then, right there, 
in the middle of the news. It hits me so hard. Get up off your pews. There is God right there on my screen. Life can be so ruthless, so cruel, and so mean. God is in the nurse facing death head on, risking her life so her patient may see her son. A chance to embrace loved ones just one last time, the patient with their whole life right there on the line. The nurse, like God, does what is best helping those who are in need, fear or distress. Then in that moment, as the nurse grabs the hand, as life passes by like grains of sand, I now see God right there in the patient's eye. That same fear seen in Jesus as he was hung up to die. For in all the pain, suffering and souls laid bare, the cross is real through a God that does care. God, my God, you know about loss. Thank you for being right here now among us. There's no one, nowhere to hide with you by our side. Looking out for kids, women and men. Now is our time to say, Amen. Thank you, Hugh. You know, isn't it just the fact that we all have to find God in these days? It's not an easy question. When we see death around us, sometimes the Bible doesn't help, does it, Hugh? You know, we get these verses saying, just ask and you will receive and all these sort of things. We have to work it through, each one of us personally, for ourselves, just where God is. But we do our best, I think. That's the thing. Let's say the creed together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death on, and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Hugh will now lead us in prayer. Dear Lord, we now begin these prayers to pray for all those who have sadly lost their lives to this virus. In this area, in this country, in this whole world, may we hold those who are deeply grieving for loved ones, for those who are ill, and for the amazing doctors and nurses who are risking their lives each day in order to save others. Lord, in your mercy, in our prayer. We 
We pray for those who are lonely at this time, those who feel isolated. We pray that we can remain safe, but continue to find a way to still love and support one another through these strange times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, we pray for wisdom for those in authority. Help them to make the right decisions to protect people from the virus. Help them to do what is best for the many. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We offer before you now, in a short period of silence, anyone who's on our hearts and minds who needs our prayers this day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for those who have recently died. And we particularly remember before you Bob Lane and his wife, Brenda, and the whole of the family. Give them comfort at this time. And pray for them as the funeral will take place tomorrow in what are normal circumstances. Help her to know and the rest of the family that they are not alone and you are walking this tough journey with them. And now in a short period of silence, we just offer before you anyone who has either recently died or died in years gone by, but continues to inspire us and touch our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, we pray for each one of us gathered today. We pray for our safety and our well-being. Thank you for the love that we share among one another. And thank you at times like this that we can lean on each other through these times. May we continue to share and grow and one day look forward to that day when we're all gathered together in the beautiful building across the road. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so we get to that part of our service where we can still share the peace with each other the risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And we can offer one another a sign of that peace with a simple wave or a smile on screen. Peace be with you. Peace be with everybody. Paul is now going to play a short video to remind us how we can continue our giving pledges to St. Michael's. During this difficult time, when our church buildings are closed, we're still a church, meeting virtually for prayer services and fellowship, loving our neighbours by offering practical support to the vulnerable and caring for our communities. The work of our church is reliant on people's generosity. Generosity that is a hallmark of a lived out faith and a testament to it. We give to our church in a variety of ways, but with the closure of all our buildings, we cannot receive all the gifts that we usually would. So we really need your help now. If you're able to give more at this time, here's how you can help. During this Thank you, Paul.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. And now we give you thanks because through him you have given us eternal life. Because through him and delivered us from the bondage of sin and the fear of death into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you, and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of Michael and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen.
So let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. And so draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. At this time, um, if you have bread and wine with you, we can now share taking that bread and the wine, and consider it to be those holy mysteries in which our life is based around. And take it that the bread and wine that you have is consecrated, just as the bread and wine that I have here is consecrated. And so the body of Christ keep you in eternal life. And the blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Eternal God, whose Son Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, grant us to walk in his way, to rejoice in his truth, and to share his risen life, who is alive and reigns now and forever. We pray together. We thank you, Lord, that you have fed us in this sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet, prepared for all peoples. Amen. Lord, we have broken your bread and received your life. By the power of your Spirit, keep us always in your love and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, keep you in life eternal now and forever. Amen. If anyone has any notices that they would like to share with us uh, before our final hymn, that would be rather nice. Anyone got anything to say? Just a couple of things. Um, uh, firstly, um, people will be aware that Bob Lane died. Uh, people know Brenda, um, Brenda Lane. It's uh, Bo her husband, Bob. He's not been well for a while, bless him. Um, his funeral's tomorrow at half 12. Uh, well, they're leaving the house, you say, at half 12. But obviously, because of restrictions, people 
can't obviously go to the funeral. They've only got the quota of 10. But Brenda did say that they're making a way down Church Road uh, around half 12. Uh, so if people want to kind of pay the respect, you know, um, uh, from basically where Alex lives, kind of straight down to the end of Church Road. If anyone wants to stand and pay the respects, they'll be welcome to Brenda. But obviously, keep your distance from everybody. Um, uh, so please do keep her in your prayers in the family. And, and the, just the other thing as well, can you just be aware it is Christian Aid Week this week? Um, I mean, not that we've been doing collections for a while, to be honest, but still, it's, it's just something bearing in mind um, to, to support them online and stuff, because like a lot of charities, they, are, they will be struggling at the moment in these times with people not doing house-to-house -house collections and stuff. So just keep that at the back of your mind that it's Christian Aid Week this week. Thank you very much. Cheers, Alex. Thanks, Hugh. Um, I intend to walk down and stand with Hugh, keeping my distance, as I always do with Hugh, keeping my distance of two metres um, around about half twelve. And if anyone wants to, Hugh, I think that might be a good idea. If people want to come to St Michael's Church building or uh, across the road at um, Hugh's uh, driveway, um, I'll be there and uh, it would be rather nice if the, uh, the church had uh, plenty of people there to say goodbye to Bob. Um, I don't think there is anything else that we need to share at the moment. Um, if our dear Prime Minister allows us out of the house uh, later today, we might even stand a little bit closer to Hugh every now and again. So um, let's see what happens this afternoon. But the main thing, of course, is to keep safe, isn't it, really? And if we've managed to stay in our oldies uh, for the last six weeks, then we can manage another two or three weeks, I should think, as well. So uh, let us not despair. Hope is at hand. And I've enjoyed these, um, these uh, services. Um, you know, it's lovely when we can see each other on a screen. Sometimes we don't always make it to St Michael's every week and um, uh, it, it is rather nice to uh, to be able to catch up with people in such a way our final hymn this morning thy hand O god has guided
Wishes to stay um, online with us um, if they want to uh, just chat informally for a few moments after this service, you are of course more than welcome to do so. But at the moment, go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>